Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. Welcome. Sorry, we're a couple minutes late this morning. The technology never is never goes easy with us. Hey, Kristen. Good morning to you. Hope you're doing well today on this gray day. Got a part of that season where kind of color seems to go to die. You know, there's, there's this uh, it's kind of gray on gray. Hope, hope you're doing well. A little sailboaty mug up this morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope this Thursday is treating you well. For those of you who are interested, we're on the 31st of January. We're going to begin, um, we're going to have our all church family night, which is for everybody in the church, for all whole entire church family. Uh, we start at 5 30, we have a meal, and then we'll have the opportunity to. Uh, to uh, have a program, and this time around, we do different things every every time. We do this once a quarter, but every this time we're going to do. Um, I'll be talking about my Camino experience, so I have some stories to share and some things that like that. Anybody who'd like to come, if you want to, just l let us know if you're coming. That would be great to uh, uh, be able to make sure we can feed everybody. But uh, other than that. Um, everyone is welcome, um, and if anybody wants to, uh, we'll have pictures and some slides um, and the opportunity to uh, share, uh, for me to share kind of the gift of, of my pilgrimage and uh, some time. So that'll be in the 31st, a couple of weeks from now on a Wednesday night, so 5.30 to 7. Hope you can make it a part of your um, uh, your life. We'll, I'm, we probably will record it, but... I don't think it will be live, but don't quote me yet. We'll see. All right, friends, good morning to you. Uh, before we get going, I just want to ask uh, for prayers for our friend Vicki. Um, Vicki is down in the Dominican. She has a, a mission there that she's gone for, uh, has gone down there for many years. And uh, a part of that, and she, she managed to get um, injured um, and, you know, so please pray for her and, and uh, lift her up in your prayers. Um, she's doing okay. She's getting, she's getting some care and she's still in, into her work and doing her thing. But, um, but um, do, uh, do, do keep her in your prayers as she uh, continues to, to work and care for the folks of the Dominican in these days. Hey, everybody. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Deb. So glad you're here. Great to see you. All right, friends, let's begin this morning. It is the 18th day of January on this Thursday. Welcome to at 1111. Welcome that you are here and you're a part of this journey. Uh, I am grateful to see your digital little faces here up here. Or, and if, uh, and, but if you are catching this at another time or another place or this is the first time you've heard my voice, no matter what, welcome. And know that uh, your presence here means that uh, you'll be prayed for today. I will pray for everybody who listens to this stream today and uh, the chance to be, a, to be a part of this community. So welcome, and I'm so glad you're a part of it. Uh, this morning, I want, to, uh, I want to take us to the book of Galatians. So Galatians is this book written by Paul. Um, so it's called the Epistle to the Galatians, a, a letter to the church in Galatia. And he, uh, where he is, um, uh, where he's trying to talk to the church about how to, and, and so Galatia is about the, about the middle of Turkey. If you think about Turkey as a country, about, about the middle of Turkey is about where Galatia uh, was. And so he, he's writing this letter to them and, and because they're, they have this problem where the, the Jewish community that is becoming a, you know, it's a, members of which are becoming Christians is, has actually, is actually a smaller part of the community of the larger Gentile community, the, the, the Celts and the pagans and the people that live there in central Turkey that are actually becoming attracted to the church. And this is very early on. So nobody knows how to do anything yet. There's, 
there are some scholars that say the book of Galatia, the book of the book of Galatians was written as early as 40 AD. That so we're talking, uh, you know, uh, 17 years after Jesus's death. So we're talking, you know, that. Um, um, uh, um, well, no, sorry, seven years after Jesus' death. Math. I got the maths today. Um, that seven years after Jesus' death, that that this could have been going on. So, you know, the 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 the, the dating is little, but it's it's possibly as early as that. Um, some scholars will say. So there, there's this question. So nobody knows how to do anything here in terms of being Christian. Nobody even knows what that means at this point in the game. Uh, they are there. And, and so Paul is taking this stab at it. He's making this attempt to say, this is what it means that because the, the, the Jewish folks that had been a part of the synagogue and then, and then seeing Jesus really as the Messiah that was prophesied to come before as a continuation of their continued worship. So that means if you're going to con convert, you have to become essentially fully Jewish, meaning, and, and as you might imagine, the big sticking point here is, do the Gentile converts that are coming over, do the, the, the pagans and the people who just happen to live in Galatia, do they have to be circumcised in order to, to, uh, to become Christians? This is an issue you might imagine for adult men about whether or not this is going to be some, this is going to be a deal breaker or not. And so, and Paul's case is that he says, no, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not th that, that following Jesus is not about that. It's not about this outward mark or this outward sign or this outward, uh, because that in many ways, and, and he, you can read the book of Galatians if you really want to get into that whole thing. But he, he's but he's making he he has he goes on to make this more qualitative argument. And this is what you know, there's a lot of things that I like about Paul, a lot of things I don't like about Paul. This is one of the things I like about Paul is that that he gets this qualitative argument. He's he's not making a he's not making a statistical argument, he's not making a, even a theological argument. He's he's talking about a he begins to talk about a quality, about what does it mean to be Christian? Again, remember, this could have been written as early as seven years after, after Jesus' resurrection. We're, we're, talking, we're talking flash to bang time really close. Like there's, there's, there's this, uh, that they're, they're simply figuring out what this means and how to do it. And so, and in this, in the sixth chapter, of, so Paul writes this, where he's, he's trying to tell us this quality. Of what, what does this mean? What does it actually look like in our life? This is this from Galatians 6. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, and whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows will please the spirit from the and will please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Now, you might not think that's a radical statement, but in a world in, uh, incredibly tribal, and when I, I use the word tribal to say you had a team that you were on, and if you weren't on that team, you, you were there was there was uh, um, there was uh, there was no place for you in that world. Uh, just to give you the example of, you know, why does the Jewish Old Testament scripture spend so much time talking about care of the widows and orphans? You know, we we you can read that and from a modern context and say, well, why is that such a big deal? Because widows and orphans literally could not engage in the world in which they were a part of. That, that, orphan, that widows could not do commerce without, a, without a, uh, being a part of a, of, a, uh, of a larger family structure in which there was a male to represent them. An orphan that did not have a family literally did not have, and that the, the ancient world is rife with widows and orphans on the side of the road starving to death. 
Like that's a thing that happens because there was no tribe of which they were a part. There was no one for which whom they could do good and, and, that who, and who would do good to them because there was no point in doing good to somebody that was outside of your tribe, that was outside of your unit, that was outside of your, your, your journey. When Paul says this, when he, and he starts it, here I start that, he says, do not be, God will not be mocked. That this idea that, that, that with all of the children of God that are out there, that, that this is, that coming from this place that says, I'm just going to do what's good for me and mine, is actually a mockery of the holy. Like it's actually a, a making fun of, of God when God says, you are all of my children that I've come that that Jesus came into the world that all might be saved that that all might know the love of God. And so when Paul is trying makes this point, it it is a radical point. It is a radical departure. This idea that we might do good to people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. That's not to say we're not supposed to care, you know, even give special preference to the people we are closest to. I mean, it, it, it's, it's harder and it's easier to love the people that you're closer to, right? Like it's really, it's great to, to love your partner, or your brother or sister, or people that's there. But also they get really annoying on you sometimes. Sometimes they can get rid of your last nerve and they can dance around there for a while. Like sometimes that's what happens. And that, and, and so sometimes it, it but, so it's not wrong for us to love the people that that we're closest to the most, but it is. But this radical notion that Paul comes up with, that this notion that will go on to transform the world. I mean, we take it as a part of our day that you should just kind of try and be nice to people that you encounter. That's not always been humanity's stance on these things. In fact, it's not always been. The, the gods that we worship stance on these things. About uh, a few years back, there was, um, uh, came out, um, I think it was sometime in 2020, came out this, uh, this Reddit meme called uh, the shopping cart theory. And the shopping cart theory, and you may have heard of it, it has gone on to millions of shares. The New York Times has written articles about it. People have, uh, um, you know, have come up with it. But it was this. It was this very short post, and I'm going to read it for you because it's that. It's that short, and it uh, and it and it speaks to this. Um, uh, it, it, I think it speaks to this reality, uh, and how radical that this statement that Paul made some two thousand years ago. And the way in which that was the de de declaration of God's love in the world and the way in, uh, in Christ Jesus and the way in which that has gone on to continue to be the metric, the thing right here and right now. What does it mean for us to be a child of God? Well, I think it means something like the shopping cart theory. And, and I'll read it for you now. The shopping cart is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task and one which we all recognize as correct. The appropriate thing to do is to return the shopping cart is objectively right. There are no situations other than dire emergencies in which a person is not able to return their shopping cart. Simultaneously, it is not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. Therefore, the shopping cart presents itself as the apex example of whether a person will do what is right without being forced to do so. No one will punish you for not returning your shopping cart. No one will fine you or kill you for not returning the shopping cart. You gain nothing by returning your shopping cart. You must return the shopping cart out of the goodness of your own heart. You must return the shopping cart because it is the right thing to do, because it is correct. A person who is unable to do this is no better than an animal, an absolute savage who can only be made to do what is right by threatening them with a law and the force that stands behind it. The shopping cart is what determines whether a person is a good or bad member of society. Now, I think you can read that with a tongue firmly planted in cheek. If you don't, if you think that is, if you think, if 
that that's an entirely serious post. Uh, you know, don't you know, please don't get all all cattywampus about it. Okay, but it does point to a reality. But it does point to a reality about uh, and not and, and where in and, and his point, it is this notion of self-governing of a, to be a self-governing human being, that we are somebody who's going to be self. But I would submit it's actually even deeper than that. It is to actually hold goodness as a value. It is actually to hold goodness as a value because the entire thing, because there there was an era and there was a day not that long ago, friends that for which humanity dwelt in a place where goodness necessarily wasn't a value. And oh, by the way, there are plenty of structures that we can point to in which goodness is certainly is maybe a value, but it's certainly not the highest one in the room. We can. They're not hard to see. Friends, my invitation to you is to recognize the what beautiful thing you are participating in when you return the shopping cart when you hold the door when you wish good as you have opportunity to let us do good to the people around us and what a radical statement that is what a transformative thing that is for you and for the world because god will not be mocked this is the thing is the order of the universe is the order of the universe you know our, our tower here is, uh, you know, 167 feet off the ground. And were one to leap from it, you, you would have an extraordinary 107, 166 feet. The 167 feet, you would have an education about gravity. That the, the, but the, the, the thing is, is that is the order of the natural world. It is not, it, 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 it doesn't wish you any malice, but it also doesn't wish you any benefit. It is the order of the natural world. The order of the spiritual world has goodness at its center and has truth at its center. We can ignore it, we can, but we can mock it, we can make fun of it, but it will not be mocked any more than gravity will be mocked when we leap ourselves out of a tower without an airbag at the bottom to catch us. Friends, my hope for you is that you will rejoice in the work of the shopping cart. Rejoice in the work of the simple good of the day. Rejoice in it because it is, it is an radical and beautiful departure from the selfishness of our own being in which we, and, and, the, and, and all that would tear us apart as human beings. And all of the, the, the nattering nabobs of negativism that are out there that would tell us to be separate from the other, that would tell us to, to that that would tell us that, that tribe is you know that the, the blue tribe versus the red tribe versus the, the green tribe, you know, versus the blue tribe, you know, the the Massey Ferguson versus the the John Deere tribes, you know. See, I spent a little time in farm country too. All right. You, you see where I am and you see where I'm saying and you see my hope for you today. My hope for you today is that you will rejoice in your shopping cart work and that you'll be a part of the true and the good and the beautiful as it comes into this world as you go about your day and do the good for those you encounter where you find it. Because friends, that is what it means to be a follower of this Jesus guy. That is what it means to be a part of this the beauty of this universe and the beauty of this world, not as it is, but as God would wish it to be for us. So friends, I hope you will rejoice and be courageous and be weary not in your work of the shopping cart. All right, peace and grace to you, my friends. I, I, it's uh, so great to be here. Uh, hey, Fanny Faye, great to see you. Robin, great to see you. So glad you're here. John Wells, Thomas Alva Edison was with us, friends. That's, that's a trip. Uh, hey, Robin, glad you're here. So good. Uh, so great to see you. Jamie, how are you? Uh, so great to see you all. Uh, we are worshiping on Sunday at 10 o'clock. I hope you'll be here. It's Fellowship Sunday. We're going to have a great day. Um, we have a lot of goodness in it. Uh, peace and grace to you all, my friends, and uh, be about that shopping cart work. We'll pick it up next week with another 1111.